Good morning, everybody. And how are you on this amazing, wonderful, sunny morning? It's a really sunny morning. So here we go, having a great time, sending a little bit of love out to the world today and enjoying every moment of it. So one of the things we can perhaps do is just look at ourselves and give a nice blessing and a wonderful feeling to ourselves today, saying how we feel about this beautiful human being that is standing there with you, you, looking at you and thinking, wow, I am blessed and I'm highly favored. I am amazing. And just look at it because that is what it is. You can just look at yourself and bless yourself as much as you can. And this is what is wonderful about it. Blessing self every day. So here we go. Good morning, Ali. Good morning, Corinne. Haven't seen you for a long time. I know you're busy with, with homeschool. So how are all of you doing today? I hope you guys are doing really well today because it's a beautiful, beautiful morning. Everything is amazing. And so here we go. I have this amazing thing. When I woke up this morning, I felt, oh my God, hi, Azim, how are you doing? I felt so amazing this morning when I looked out and the sun was getting ready to come out. I said, oh, thank God, it's going to be a sunny day. And it's going to be a wonderfully sunny day. So here we are. I chose a new spot this morning because I just wanted to try around. All my backgrounds are always the same. Good morning, Christina. How are you this morning? So I wrote down the mantra for today. I am ready for all of life's wonderful surprises. I am ready for all what life is going to throw at me today. All the surprises that life is going to bring to you today, it's amazing. You have to hold on. Today, on our gratitude, it's amazing. I, I looked at our gratitude list for the morning and I thought, wow, what are we going to talk about today? But I have it all made up. So I thought, you know what? Today is the sixth day of doing gratitude. So we have had five days behind us. So I'm going to ask everybody, put a little note. How are you feeling about consciously thinking of how to be grateful to others today? How are you feeling about it? What are you thinking? What are you thinking when you think of somebody and you want to be grateful? You're thinking of what you're sending out. Five days. Today's day six. So take a look back and see how you felt when you started on day one. Take a look back and see how you're feeling on day two because that is so important. And day three and day four and day five. Somebody sent me a little note this morning and that's why I'm, I'm coming to say this to you. She said, you know, I did the, the gratitude journal when you did it before for a month and I wrote every day. And then she said, I, after you stop I doing it with us, I stopped. But she said, what I did, I continued to do them with my words. So I would try, she said, to just be, I am grateful for this wonderful opportunity to be here today. I am grateful for the time that I spent with so-and-so today. And then she said, I continued doing them and I was not writing them down. But whenever I felt it, I got into the habit of it. So she said, it was such a relief this time to pick up her journal and she said, before I started writing, because I needed to get it ready before the first, I brought it out and I started looking back at the things I had been grateful for. And she said, by doing that gratitude reverse, going back and saying, I am grateful, all the things she wrote when we did it for that whole month, I think it was last year or the year before. And she said, she realized, oh my God, all these things are so great in my life. She said, I remember doing a gratitude journal that I would feel better because she said at the time I was not feeling well and the doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. And you talked about it and you said, do your gratitude journal and see what you want to or you desire in your life. And she said, I did. I wrote, hi Yoko, good morning, hi Donato. And I said, she said to me, I said to myself, I am going to be I'm going to be grateful for whatever is coming through with this situation with my health. 
And she said, I kept doing it and doing it. Even when I was in the doctor's office, she said I would sit there because it was like every week. Nobody knew what was going on. And she said, I am grateful the doctors find what was wrong. I'm grateful I have the right treatment. I'm grateful I am better now. So she said she kept doing that. And she ended up, after about six months, getting better. But it took her six months because she said she's looking at the journal and she's seeing she did write about that. And that's what she was writing about three times. She would write that in her journal. So then she said, I just wanted to call you or send you a note to let you know that starting those, those gratitude journal is really making me think of how lucky I was or how blessed I was that I took gratitude for something I didn't know what the, third, what the ending was going to be. And it happened to fix my life. So she, so what I'm asking you guys, you have five days. Today is day six. Today is day six. Gratitude for self. That is what it is. Gratitude for you being you. And being unique. Being special. And that is why I'm asking you to look back for the past five days. And if you really truly practice gratitude and make it part of your life, you will not be rushed. You will not be stressed. I told you that already, but every five days, I'm going to give you a recap on gratitude. Every five days, I'm going to say something to you about gratitude, about being ready, about being, you know, organized in your mind, saying, I am important. I am me. I am this person that needs more gratitude. So this is something you have to do. Say your gratitude for self. This is day six. Day six is saying gratitude for self so be grateful for what you're going through yourself be grateful for what you desire for yourself remember gratitude comes in three spots you have gratitude which you're taught i got this i received this i'm grateful i'm thankful that's gratitude we know we all know that and i ask you to look at gratitude where you send the gratitude out to others and because of you you're saying i'm grateful i was able to help so and so i know my friend um, right now, because of school, she's there, she babies, she not babysit, she's schooling her, her grandchildren because the parents still have to work. So she has to be grateful. She's able to assist her, her family. So this is what gratitude is, is what you do, not only what you receive. I'm grateful because so-and-so gave me this. I'm grateful because so-and-so told me this. I'm, I'm this and that. I'm grateful because somebody said I'm great at what I do. No. She, is, she has a choice now to choose gratitude to for self. I am so grateful I have the strength and the energy to, to school my grandchildren while my children are earning a living. That's huge. So what it is you're doing for, your, for somebody else in the middle of this, this is, this is gratitude phase, phase two. I'm grateful I'm serving you by coming here and telling you, talk to you about gratitude, especially after receiving this note from this lady who did the gratitude journal a year or two ago with us and now she's telling me at that time she was being grateful to get better to find out number one not even getting better finding out what was wrong with her and then to get the med proper medication and now she says she's better so that was great no your third phase of gratitude is like her what are you what do it is you desire in your life that you are not taking the time to stand on it and to claim it and to taste it and to see yourself in that position what is it what is that one thing you desire to be or to have like Tehran when he told us about all his journey how he was being grateful in India for 2019 2018 he said it is so difficult to get certain documents that he wants to come to Canada. He went online and he printed, he said it last night, he printed a, a permanent resident card and he wrote his name on it and stuck it on his wall and, and he kept saying, I am grateful I now hold my permanent resident, resident card to come to Canada. And when he finally got it, he realized it was so true. Everything on it, like he did, it came true for him. So that is gratitude for what you want to be. You can, we, we can pray as much as we want to pray, which is great. We must do that. But we must have definite plans for our life. 
the desires of our life can be fulfilled. You cannot wait and say, God knows what I want. God, of course, knows what you want, but God gave you a will to choose whether you want it really. So sitting there and saying, I pray and God will give it to me. No, you have to pray and then you have to ask. That's why he said, ask and you shall receive. And when you do the asking, don't do the doubting right next to the asking. Don't say, when I pray, I get what I want, but God gives me something else. I, so I guess I'm just going to let God give it to me. No, you're letting other people make the decisions for you because you have a choice to pray. Ask and it shall be given to you. Ask and believe. So you have to believe that what you ask for, hi Susie, you will get it. So this is one of the things we need to remember. As much as we want to pray and receive what God has in plan for us, if God did not have another plan, which is ask and you shall receive. He said, you must ask. He didn't say stand there and I know what you want and I'll pour it on your head. That's not what he said. But so we have to make these plans and see ourselves in the position. The moment we ask, the third phase of asking is really, really the most important one for you to stimulate your, sight, your senses, to get you ready, to wake the vibe coming to you. So with gratitude, you cannot just be grateful for what is in your life right now. You cannot be grateful for what you're receiving right now. This is not how it works. It, you have more to life than what happens to you. you. There is more to life than that. I am grateful I am able to serve somebody else to do. Each one of us has somebody they can serve. When you're doing the service for someone, you, whether you're getting paid to do that service, you should still be grateful. And I will not compare, use comparison because we don't use comparison with great gratitude. You are able to do something that serves, that helps somebody else, whether they pay you or not, you should be grateful. I am able to do this. I have the opportunity to do this. That is gratitude for self. Then, of course, the gratitude for what you desire that has not materialized yet. Seeing it in place, standing with it, enjoying it, picturing yourself in it. Gratitude works that way. So today, day six, go back, look at the five days that you, what you, what you would been grateful for. If you have been writing them down, that's the best thing you can do. But one of the things that I know for sure, I really know it and there is no doubt, I have done it for so, so many years and so many times. Whatever you wish you desire in your life, when you write it down, it must happen. Not when you text it down, not when you put it in your notes on your phone. When you take a piece of paper and a pen and you write it out on a piece of paper and you cherish that paper and you write it as many times as you feel you need to write it, it must happen. It has to be clear. So you have to write your gratitude for what you desire before it comes. Yesterday, I attended a virtual course and Jack Canfield, the one who wrote the um, Chicken Soup for the Soul, he said that. And I, you know where I got it from? When I heard him saying that, I went, wow, and I practiced it. I have been practicing that since I was about 16. You know how I, I learned it? When I saw the movie, The Ten Commandments, that movie, when Yul Brynner was the, the Pharaoh and, and Charleston Heston was the Moses, and that, that, that part of it was like this. He, he had, um, Charleston Heston, the character he played, had asked um, Pharaoh, to release the Israelites from slavery. So at that time, they had a group of them gathering the straw and the clay and a group that made the bricks. So at that time, when he came and asked them to free his people, instead of freeing them, he said to the brick layers, makers, you have, Pharaoh said, you have to make the bricks, the same amount of bricks you make, and you have to gather the straw and the clay yourself. And then he turned to the scribe and he said, so let it be done. So let it be written. So let it be done. He said, so let it be written. So let it be done. When he said that, 
something tricked in my 16, 17 year old brain. And I went, wow. So what he's saying, if it is written, it must be done. If he's saying that what you write down must materialize. And from that day, I, so although that time was not an important time for that, it was an, a sad time for the Israelites. I understood that. But I seem to have an ability to take off something that is beneficial from everything. So when I'm facing an adversity, I always seem to be able to find what is good about it. And I learned it from that man. I learned it from that movie. And I have lived and seen it work for me. I remember in 2011, it's 2011, 2001, I wrote in a little red book several things that I wanted to achieve. Several things. It went from about this long. And in 2011, my brother Eric was visiting and he, he saw the book on the kitchen table because I was writing something, a, a story, and I wanted to place the characters in the right way. I happened to grab that book, didn't look at what it had in there, and wrote. So he picked it up and he's flipping through the pages. You know, brothers are annoying. So, and then he said, wow. So he said, did you, he said, I know there's one thing you accomplished. I know that for sure. I can see it. It's physical. It's right there. He said, but all these other things, did you accomplish them? And it's only then I remembered. I went and I looked at the book, July 31st, 2001. I wrote all these things down. I think it was 2.30 in the afternoon. So I must have been in the garden. And, and everything on that list had come to pass. Everything, not one thing. And surpassed the quantity where there was choices for the amount of money or the amount of vacation, whatever. So what I want to share with you is to make sure your gratitude of what you desire is written down. Jack Hanfield said that yesterday. And when he said that, he was showing people how to write that, how you must write it. And he said, you have to be sure about it and you have to be determined and you have to be disciplined and you must be clear and have clarity. And just saying it out in the open, I am going to do this, and I'm, that is not enough. And that is one of the things he said. So write what you desire down. Write it with feelings, commitment. Make it as wide as you can. So it's the same thing. Gratitude for what you want is still available. I'm using the word want, which I don't like to use because that's the word most people do. I choose the word desire. It's a softer and a sweeter word for me. What the things you desire, write it down in your gratitude journal also. So in your five things you're writing every morning or whenever you choose, I only give you five. I write 10. I write 10 things and I say maybe 10,000 things during the day. So when you write them down, choose one for the present. Choose two for where you gave. And, there's, and then choose two for your desires. One, acknowledgement, because we do that so well so often, for the present gratitude. The second one, second two, what did you do today that was nice for somebody? Whether you got paid to do it, the point is you served someone for money or for without money, whatever. Write that down. And then... Write down what you desire. You desire to be successful at what you do. I know several of you here have, uh, have desires that are different, that you want, to, you want to help people, you want to serve others, you want to be creative, you want to write a book, you want to, you want to lose weight, you want to feel healthy, you, you want to be better, you want to find joy in everyday living. Write that down. I am now... Happy and grateful, I am joyful. I am now happy and grateful, I am the type of whatever coach you want to be. I am now happy and grateful, I have written my book. I am now happy and grateful, my course is successful. I am now happy and grateful and feel it. Feel how you would feel when your course is successful. Feel the energy when you feel better. Feel the joy. When you feel like, wow, this is really what I want. 
So right now, give some love, send some hats out. Let me see the hats coming up so you guys can feel the energy that is coming from what I'm saying to do. Press the button, give some love. That is giving gratitude. That is serving somebody who serves you. So it has to go like that. It has to be reciprocal. You have to accept it. Press the button and shower the hearts out there. That is a form of giving. Say something when you're on the live. That is a, some, a form of giving. Ask a question. You stimulate the senses. Somebody else will have the answer. That is the middle phase. The middle phase is you're listening to somebody doing something and you came there to listen because you thought, today I might get a nugget. Today, I might receive that black pearl I so crave. Today, I might find that Canadian diamond in my pocket. Then give some love. Press the heart. Say something. Make a comment. Get involved. When I go to a live, I listen and I always have something to say. Whether it's what you're wearing or what you just said and you just t listen. If you cannot spend the 40 minutes with that person on the live and you go for 10, it's better than not going at all. Because when you get there, you are giving of them. They are giving something. You went to receive something. So you say, thank you. I say, wow, I'm going to give you some love. I like what you're saying. You're pressing the heart button. You're pressing this. You're saying something. That is engagement. When you're doing that, the worst things that is happening in your life, you forget it for that moment. For that moment, all the trials and tribulations and all the dissatisfaction and the things that are not working for you, at that moment, you're concentrating for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, writing something. That gives you a break. Last night, I talked about the 70,000 thoughts we have every day. And I asked you guys how many of them were the same as yesterday. And 95% are the same. And we have a challenge to each other, to ourselves. Try to change your thoughts every day. Try to change it and make it something better. So this is what you're doing today. When I go in somebody's life, I'm going to press the button. I'm going to give them some love. I'm going to tell them thank you. I'm going to say that is great. That is what we have to do for each other. That is giving. And when you are giving to somebody, you forget the hurt. You forget the pain. You forget the disturbances in your life. You forget what you don't have in your life because your mind is clear. After you've done that, you will get clarity. After you have written your, your gratitude of one for the present, I'm grateful I woke up this morning. That's a good one. I'm grateful I'm breathing this morning. That is in the first phase, the regular, ordinary gratitude we all were taught as kids. Then you look at the second gratitude. What did I do today for somebody else? I serve, I had a live, I did something for somebody, I picked up the phone, I called someone, I talked to a family, friend, neighbor, I waved, I, I said, how are you doing? So these are the giving ones. That's where you're giving. And you have to be grateful you are capable and you're able to do this. If you didn't know of phase two, you have to give praise. I now found out there are several ways of being grateful. I am happy and grateful. I found out that when I do something for someone, I need to be grateful to self for doing that, to my mind for seeing that, my consciousness, my wisdom. I'm grateful I have the wisdom to serve. And then, of course, the third stage is still for you. In the present, I am now happy and grateful. I am the success I planned. And this is what you have to do. So I have to look at you guys to see what you said to me about that. So, hi, Zim, and follow your bliss. I just love that name. <laughs> um, and Christina is here in Donato, and Yoko, Corinne. Um, we did it. Okay, Corinne just clarified something. We did the gratitude journal September 2019, guys. That is when we did it. So for those of you who didn't know, we wrote, everybody had just fun. Everybody showed their books, we had pictures, and we did it in 2019. So it's actually almost, you know, two years. So it's a year and some months. Morning, oh, good morning, beautiful queen. Where is your poster child this morning? I don't know what he's looking for. Brian Tracy. As cool. remember that yesterday, as, as, as. Yes, that's true. That's true. I remember when he said that. 
Um, everybody that's here has something really nice. Merci, Ali. Um, I don't know how to be speaking French for a moment. I agree. I love using desire too. Thank you, Susie. I really prefer desire. Want is a harder word. Be great, but gratitude never worked for certain people. We wanted in our life, in our past, what do to do then? Okay. Grat but gratitude never worked for certain people. We wanted in our life, in our past, what to do then? Then when gratitude does not work for somebody, you're not serving enough. You're not generous enough. enough. Um, follow your bliss. When gratitude is choked and it's not coming your way or the person's way, that means that person is not giving enough. They're not feeling it. They're not taking that energy and that gratitude and they're not putting passion behind their gratitude. They're not putting passion and they're not serving enough. And they have to watch their thoughts. You cannot be grateful on the right hand and on the left hand you have a lot of negative thoughts. You cannot say, I am grateful I am now successful. I'm grateful I have this. And then this next thought is, oh, I don't know whether I'll get it. So you cannot do gratitude two ways. It's like worshiping. You cannot worship two ways. You worship or you, you believe or you don't believe. You don't have a choice. You, there's nothing in the middle. In the middle is the abyss. It's empty. It's a void. So you have to choose to believe in that. If you're going to be great, gr grateful and you want, and gratitude will, gratitude never worked. No. Gratitude was just works. Gratitude takes power. And it doesn't take days for gratitude to work, guys. Gratitude can work in hours. Being grateful can turn your, which hours? Being grateful can turn your attitude and your, your level and your energy and your vibration in minutes. In actual minutes, if not even seconds, I can boldly say that. When you are grateful, it changes the whole thing. It changes your paradigm. It makes you feel alive and stimulated and ready to go. So that is one of the things. Joy said, would you react? Would you react the five things oh, to be written down? Okay, I will do that. Um, so gratitude. I'm sorry. Um, follow your bliss about that but gratitude tried come here for those 31 days we have we have those rest of the month to go and maybe we will do one day a week on gratitude because i realize the power of being grateful if you're if somebody is not succeeding in gratitude you are not being grateful enough and you're not serving enough give more of yourself to the world and the world will pay you back i know that i am living proof of it Lots of wonderful things happen. Like, I, my, my girlfriend and I, we live on this amazing street. We live on this amazing neighborhood. This is something to be grateful for. This is something to know when I open my door, somebody will wave and say, Hi, Tessa Marie, how are you doing? And somebody will come up to me and say, Can I put some extra stuff in your, in your recycling bin? People talk. I am blessed. So you are grateful for that and that. So you have to give more to receive that gratitude. You have to give more of yourself to the world. You have to find small things to be grateful for, tiny things. I'm grateful the sun is shining through the window and I could choose to come here and do this live in this particular spot, changing the vibration. So um, yesterday there was no sun. So the, you have to be grateful for all of that. And then you have to be grateful for your ability to serve. If you are not getting gratitude, you're not serving enough. Would you repeat the five things? Okay. We have five things every day you should choose to be grateful for. The first one is I am grateful I'm standing. I'm grateful I woke up this morning. I'm grateful for what is in the present moment, the present tense. Right now, no, no, what you're grateful for? I'm healthy, I'm, I woke up, I had tea, I had I'm grateful for all those things. I'm grateful I have a wonderful life. You can choose that. Whatever is great in your life, as far as you are concerned, that is what you do. Then, the second, the middle part of gratitude, I ask you to choose two things that you're grateful, grateful you can do for others. Two things you're grateful you can serve. So, one of them could be, I'm grateful I came on the live and I learned something, I gave some hats. 
because you had to stop and say, you know what, I'm just not going to just listen to this. I'm grateful I had the ability to ask a question. I am grateful. So that is you. That is your action. You're grateful for the actions you took. So find two things, and that will force you to serve more. That will force you to be nicer because now you are being grateful for the actions you take towards somebody else. So that is it. So I'm grateful when I came on the live, I heard this and then I wasn't clear. I'm grateful I had the courage or the, some people are afraid to type. So you, you're grateful I took the courage to ask the question and then you have the answer. And you're going to say, no, I'm grateful I got the answer. I'm grateful I understand what she means. You understand? So this is it. So that's the middle one. So phase two, grateful for the things, the presence, the feeling, the energy, whatever is around you. Phase two, phase one is that. Phase two is gratitude for what you're able to do for others. Gratitude number three, the, first, the phase three, is grateful for the things you desire in your life. You must put them down in writing though. You can put them down in writing and then you say them. So let it be written. So let it be done. What is written is done. So you have to write those down especially the last two present gratitude gratitude for the work you do how you serve how you help how you assist gratitude number three what you desire to have in your life and try to use the word desire somebody said to me actually my granddaughter not granddaughter my goddaughter told me that for years she was trying to get pregnant and I, and I know she was going everywhere and getting all kinds of, she did yoga, she did thought analysis, mindsets and all of that. She does have a beautiful six-year-old daughter right now. But I remember coming from the, my husband's funeral, we were standing on the step and, you know, I was talking to her and she was pregnant and we knew that. And then she said, you know, she calls me Nina because she's Filipino. And she said, you know, Nina, from the minute I stop wanting to be pregnant, because want never fulfills itself. Want is, each time you say you want, that means you don't have it. She said to me, each time I said I want to get pregnant, I wasn't getting pregnant because I had admitted to myself, I want it. So she said, I started using the desire. And when you use desire, it comes from your heart. It comes from passion. It comes, desire alone. The word desire, if we take the meaning of it, it has to do with sensuousness, with love. So desire, you, you're, you're encasing it with love. I desire to be successful at whatever. So use desire, drop want, because want is a, is a gully. It never is fulfilled. And that is what you have to, I hope this helps you. Um, Uday, Rosita, and Angelica. Thank you guys for joining. Um, Vanessa joined. And so all of you, it is a wonderful morning and anybody has any, my phone may die. Sorry, Ali, I hope you guys is going again. Um, so if there's anything, you guys have any questions on, please always put your questions in there. Your question helps somebody else because there might be somebody who has the same question and they don't know and they're afraid or they're concerned they mightn't spell the word. We have people... Um, from all over the world coming for the live. We go as far as Iran and J Iran, Japan, Iraq, and Africa now. So they're coming from, everybody comes over all over the world. So when you ask a question or you answer, like when I wanted to remember when we did the um, morning, ble um, the morning blessing gratitude, it was in September of 2019. So Corinne put that in. So now I remember, and those of you who knew, no, no, no. So when you write a question, Ali, for example, his English is not very good, but he's there all the time. He might want that to have that same question, but doesn't know how to put the words together because he's still learning English. It's not his first language. So when you do that, you are serving Ali and somebody like him. And that is what it's all about. So this is why it's important that you put the questions that you have in your mind and take your time. We are not here to judge you. If the spelling is wrong, we just, we figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And everything, like the woman said, is figurable. 
anything you have to face, there's some way to figure it out. My friend Corinne uses that. She said, oh, we'll sort it out. Or she, she just, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. So she does that a lot. And this person understands that. So we will figure it out. So if the grammar is not right, it doesn't matter. No judgment here. We, we are here to serve. We are here to help you be the better you. I come every day to give you tools so that you can live a fulfilled life, the fulfilled life that you desire for yourself. Um, so have fun, and I'll talk to you guys later. It has been an amazing life, and everybody who came, and those of you who I don't know, welcome, and for the first time, thank you for coming. Thank you for dropping in. The morning blessing is where you come to be inspired, enlightened, educate, and encourage every day. That's what I give to you. And all we want is for you to share it with others. Tell somebody else about the morning blessing. It's a great day to start your day. No judgment, no criticism, just love. And tonight I am having a topic that's going to tickle you a little bit. So drop in tonight to hear what we're talking about because it's a question you have to ask yourself. So, and if you are fortunate to have the answer, then that should be stunningly important. So see you tonight at 7 p.m. for this wonderful, stimulating conversation at the Tessa Marie Show. So in the night, the morning is a blessing, is a giving to stimulate you, to help you to fulfill your life, the life you want. In the evening is to give you a path. To, to entertain you, but also in that process, educate you, get you to get back online, get back in the line, get back in your life, choose your life, make it it. In the morning, I'm preparing you to face the world. I'm telling you, it's okay. You can do whatever you want out there, that you are already blessed or, or given gifts and talents to use in that world. One of them is to ask and you shall receive every day. And then at night, I will tell you, talk to you about the things that are part of all our lives, where you will be enlightened to take a step, to be inspired. You will be questioning whether this is right or wrong for you. And then you will give you some thoughts. So what are you doing? Drop in tonight at 7 p.m. Let's get stimulated. Let's have a few laughs. We won't be dancing tonight. We have to be careful using music, apparently. <laughs> they might charge us. So take care and have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you tonight at 7 p.m. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I am so grateful that you guys showed up today. Actually, I am happy, joyful, and grateful that you took the time to press the button and come to visit the live. I am even happier that one of the things you did, you gave love. You pressed that button. And that stimulates me and that helps me and that encourages me to find my substance, to find my passion. It wakes me up because what I come to give you comes from inside of me. It is meditated on before I arrive. So send in your life and joy and have an absolutely wonderful and amazing day. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. Bye-bye.